we are discussing structure of virus a virus consists of two parts capsid that is the protein coat and nucleic acid and this protein coat capsid has antigenic property and nucleic acid is the infective part okay rna or dna will be there as nucleic acid never both will be present okay rna or dna not rna and dna only one will be there okay now this is the structure of tmv tobacco mosaic virus so this is the nucleic acid rna and this is capsid okay that is the protein coat and the subunit of capsid is called capsomeres okay capsid the protein coat called capsid made of small subunits called capsomeres protects the nucleic acid okay so capsid protect nucleic acid okay and its subunits are called capsomeres these capsomeres are arranged in helical or polyhedral geometric forms in case of tmb it is arranged in helical form and this is polyhedral means three dimensional form okay the number and arrangement of capsomeres are specific for each virus this is very important in case of tmb we know capsomeres are arranged in helical form okay so the number that is tmb has 2130 ovate capsomeres this is the number of capsomeres in tmb so the number and arrangement of capsomeres are specific for each virus that's why we different them okay now viral disease as we know viruses cause various diseases in animals and plants okay so in case of animals they cause mumps caused by paramyxovirus okay and it affects our salivary gland that is the parotid gland okay small spox it is caused by variola virus herpes caused by herpes simplex virus there are two types of this virus type 1 and type 2 okay and we know all influenza commonly we call flu is a viral infection caused by influenza virus a respiratory virus it affects your nose throat and lungs okay and aids in humans is caused by hiv virus that is the human immunodeficiency virus okay aids that means acquired immunodeficiency syndrome we all know okay this is caused by a virus so this this is all are caused by virus in animals okay now in plants these symptoms can be now here the symptoms so what is the difference between symptoms and disease symptom is a manifestation of disease okay that is a feature that indicates a condition of disease suppose you have fever so this fever is a symptom of your disease okay so now the symptoms in plants these are mosaic formation okay leaf rolling and curling yellowing and vein clearing what do you mean by vein clearing that is the loss of green color of vein present in leaves okay dwarfing and stunt growth <coughs> <coughs> dwarfing and stunted growth what is stunted growth that is reduced growth rate okay we call stunted growth okay so this is the viral diseases okay now we are discussing viroids in 
T.O. Diner discovered a new infectious agent. This is infectious, okay. That was smaller than virus. Why smaller than virus? Because it has only free RNA. It lacks protein coat. So, it is smaller than virus, okay. And caused potato spindle tuber disease. So, viroids cause potato spindle tuber disease, okay. Because this is infectious. It was found to be a free RNA. Okay, it lacked protein coat. So, it has no protein coat that is found in virus. Okay, hence the name viroid. So, viroid has only free RNA. Okay, no protein coat is there. The RNA of the viroid was of low molecular weight. That is very important. Here, RNA is present, that is, nucleic acid is present, but low molecular weight okay so viroids equals to only free rna no protein and this is infectious okay now we are discussing lichens okay so lichen equals to algae plus fungi okay this is the symbiotic association of algae and fungi that is phycobiont that is the algal component plus mycobiont that is the fungal component okay this is symbiotic association of algae and fungi okay they are symbiotic association between algae and fungi algae that is autotropic because they have chlorophyll prepare food for fungi and fungi heterotopic okay because they are a chlorophyllous that is they have no chlorophyll so fungi provide shelter and absorb mineral nutrients and water for its partner partner means here algae okay so fungi absorb mineral nutrients and water this is very important okay lichens are very good pollution indicator they do not grow in polluted areas okay if there is any pollution okay so lichen will not be there okay so lichens are very good pollution indicator okay thank you